Hello friends, uh, welcome. In today's video, we are going to discuss how we build a QA roadmap for a large engagement or large program. So the very first thing I have is a delivery model. So when we are deriving our delivery model at engagement level, at, for a pro program level, uh, we need to understand what it translates or what it means to a testing. So the one thing I have to understand from testing perspective is what is my scope? What kind of application I have in the scope? Is it a web-based application, a Windows, databases, matches, ERP solution, migration? What I'm trying to do here? What is my scope? Because that will translate the type of testing. It's going to be a database testing, uh, batches testing, functional testing, non-functional testing. So it is very important that I understand my scope and then it translate to a type of testing. Another important thing is the schedule because the program will have its own schedule but then how it fits uh, uh, the QA schedule fits into the old program schedule this is important and again this is not only one system because you might have a large and complex program which has a lot of external systems and the stakeholders and you also depend on their readiness so the schedule along with their external system readiness is very very important once you have all these things you understand your scope you understand your type of testing then you have to come up with the roles and responsibilities what are the different roles you want to have in your qa team what are the responsibilities and then you'll have a team ramp up plan and ramp down plan the drawn another important aspect is from uh, from testing on qa perspective is that you understand your environment need and what kind of environment you need from your application perspective from the partner system or the integration system application perspective now, once you have all this visibility, the one of the important aspect is that what are the tools uh, we are going to use? There are various tools available in the market. If you go for, you know, let's say functional automation, you have UFT, you have Selenium, you have Cucumber. There's a lot many tools are available in the market. Now, what is the right tool uh, uh, we are going to use? So we might need to end up doing certain POCs, and we definitely need to have an inclination for it. If you want that we are picking up a right tool in the beginning so it is very important that we do certain POCs we understand which tools is the best fit for us and we go with that tool the other thing is that we have to uh, identify the defect in the test management processes once all these things is in place you have to come up with your testing strategy document this is very important this is the step one that you understand all these things and then you come up with a testing strategy document and again this is going to be a draft version only because a lot of learnings is going to happen uh, throughout the journey so uh, this document is going to evolve so this will be a you know draft version of it so that's your step one then you go to step two which is your environment and tools so you learn that what kind of environment you need what kind of tools you need in a step one then you are going to further deep dive on it you are going to set up a different kind of different sort of environment system testing system integration testing uh, pre plot uat you are going to set up all these environments you have you you know now which tools are there but uh, what is needed but do you have licenses for that or not the right configuration is there or not is it installed or set up in your environment is not all this thing has to be figured out one of the important aspect i have put here is tdm which is stand for test data management if you are part of a large and complex program then test data is going to be a crucial uh, factor there so we have to understand do i need a dedicated role as a test data engineer in the beginning as i said the qa engagement since beginning is very important do i have a uh, test data engineer requirement in the beginning what kind of test data i need do i need certain utilities to be created to build that test data all this thing has to be figured out here once I'm done with one or two, I go to third step, which actually start my testing. So one of the important aspects for large program is that I don't need to wait for my application to be fully developed, deploy, and then I start testing. Let's say uh, I have a front end which is coming uh, for uh, you know functional testing. But before that, a lot of other factors will be developed. You'll have database coming in. Uh, there might be a case that you have certain you know APIs which is written there as a backend. So the, the approach should be that how I can do my testing SIP left, how I can start my testing early, how can I identify potential defects early in the uh, overall roadmap. Because if I do that, the cost is going to be very less to fix them. But if those defects are going to come later on, the cost is very high. So 
objectives would be that how do I shift left my testing? How do I test my API as a standalone? How do I test my database as a standalone? If I need to mock up certain services, can I virtualize those services? Can I mock up those services? And then I do a shift left testing. I identify those defects early. That should be my approach. And at this point of time, I can also start baselining my non-functional requirement. Then I go to next step, uh, which is my functional testing, uh, where I'm gonna, and this is the point where my application is available, where my partner systems are available. I'm ready to do my end-to-end -end testing. This is the point which we need to go for it. I am I choosing a automation first approach? I don't want to spend a lot of time in manual testing because this testing is going to be iterative testing. We get a version of application, we test it, we find a defect, we get it fixed, we got another version, we find another defect, we get another version. So in a large program, there are going to be a multiple iterations of testing. So it is very important that I have an automation first approach in place, be it design, be it execution, so that I can squeeze the overall testing timeline. CI/CD is a, a kind of a norm nowadays in every uh, large program. The important part is that can I bring automation there and I do a continuous testing. So I have continuous integration, continuous deployment. Can I do a continuous testing and make sure my end product has the right quality? Then again, as I said, that testing is not going to be individual application testing. It's going to be end-to-end -end testing with partner system. This is very important and I'm doing end-to-end -end testing. I am making sure that from one end till another end my whole system is, is is working fine another pointer here is performance testing readiness because the last thing which i'm going to do is i'm going to do a performance testing or the security testing so this is important that the the readiness is done so that when i go to next step five i can do it so volume and performance testing cannot be done before this because to do this, I need a stable application. I need an application which do not have any open defects. So this comes at the end. And once you certify your application for the baseline NFRs, once it is approved from your security team, your security testing is done, then you are ready for your application to deploy to production. So this is how we can build a roadmap for a QA organization. If I start from again from the uh, step one, I am going to figure out my scope of testing, type of testing, my testing strategy. Then I'm going to work on my environments. Then I'm going to see how I can do a shift left testing, how the testing can be started early. That's what I have written here, QA engagement since beginning. Uh, shift left testing. Then I'm going to focus on the automation first approach. I'm going to focus how the CI CD can be integrated with continuous testing how the testing is going to happen with the partner system so that I have end-to-end -end coverage and at the end I have to cover my application, my testing with respect to non-functional requirement. And at the bottom you can see I have put some placeholder schedule, you can change the schedule. And uh, I'm hoping that uh, the roadmap which I have put here is going to be uh, very much close to your environment. But if you need a change, please feel free to do so. Uh, because every environment is different and a different uh, environment have different processes so you can change uh, the messaging here uh, a little bit to fit into your own environment now if i talk about this slide the 3d automation roadmap slide so i have already created a video earlier for this i am going to add the link in the description section you can go to that video you can uh, build a 3d automation roadmap how this slide fits for the QA roadmap, I have covered in this video that how we start from step one, from testing strategy till the performance and volume testing. And at the end, we have a matured QA organization setup done. Hope this video has given you good insight how we can build a roadmap for a large program or large QA engagement and we can achieve uh, the quality product at the end. Thank you very much for watching this video.